Friends, Flexera recently released a state of the cloud report where it talked about the most prominent constraints or the challenges which we face and due to which most of the cloud migration projects fail. And those reasons are the topic of this particular video and we'll understand all these 12 reasons one by one and what could be some steps through which we could uh, mitigate it. So let's start. The number one reason according to Flexera, lack of understanding the application dependency. For example, you bought or you migrated from your petrol or diesel car to an EV and you got it into your society. But later on, you realize that you do not have electric vehicle charges deployed in your society yet not accounted for that particular uh, dependency then it is a failure right similarly if we are just rushing for our migrations without understanding the application dependency for example if your application your front-end application you have migrated but it connects to multiple back-end applications which could not be migrated due to certain constraints then again it's a big risk and that is the major risk uh, which companies face uh, today that they do not have an understanding of application dependency. So tools like CMDB, Configuration Management Database, every company has it, big company uh, mostly has it, uh, where they make this uh, connectivity and dependency, maintain it into an inventory database, which is called as CMDB. Then for cloud, you have application discovery tools uh, for AWS, GCP, Azure. If you connect uh, those, then those could also discover those dependencies. But mostly it has to be an in-house product. You cannot rely fully on cloud for understanding your application de dependency because you are the contextual masters of your applications, right? So application dependency. Second is on-prem versus cloud cost. Someone has rightly said that everyone thinks that cloud is cheaper until they get their first bill. And that is where most of the cloud migration fail because customers have this assumption, this rosy picture that everything is cheap on cloud. But what about your total cost of ownership, which is called as TCO? Have you actually analyzed the bill? Later on, you will realize, you might realize that your on-prem was way cheaper than your cloud uh, softwares or cloud applications, migrated applications. That's why whenever you are planning, you have to understand the hidden charges. You have to understand the cost like ingress and egress, network transfers. All those things are not there visible on the surface. And that's why now there is a new department which is coming up, which is called as FinOps which specifically dedicates itself to maintain the financials of cloud spending. Technical feasibility, again, a very prominent factor because most of the times we are not able to understand the technical challenges one particular application could have. That's where, you know, we, we assume that we could, uh, you know, we could just migrate the application uh, right away as is and it won't have any problem. But later on, you might have dependencies or you might have constraints which you might have not accounted for. So that's why you have to see if an application is actually fit for a uh, cloud it might happen if that particular ap application cannot be or does not deserve to be on cloud it is well enough to maintain it on-prem and that's why you have to check the technical feasibility supportability of a particular application and its dependencies the fourth one is right sizing and selecting the best instance if you get a shoe which is bigger than your size or smaller than your size, then it will hurt you on your leg as well as on your pocket. That's why whenever you are trying to get onto the cloud, don't uh, try to get the best of the cloud very quickly. It might happen that the instance which you are choosing for your application could be very oversized. You could be a startup which is using a large or extra large instance, but your overall requirement is only for a small instance type. And then you are burning your pockets because you have not sized your requirement properly you have not understood what you need from cloud because cloud is there it is a platter of uh, of different uh, delicacies and different food and you can pick and choose but then you have to be make sure that you are ready for the bell okay so right sizing and selecting the best instance optimizing cost post migration so again we say that your journey does not end with the migration it actually starts with the cloud migration so once you are migrated you have to continuously optimize for cost because if you're not optimizing for cost, then you can again derail your whole migration project and later on realize that, you know, your migration was not successful. Always keep an eye on how you are spending, whether there is an area of improvement, optimization, which could happen. It could happen that you would have a plan for a stage approach where stage one or phase one will have your monolith as is migrated 
to cloud but in stage two you break it into microservices or cloud native application to make it more cost efficient so friends before we move on i have to highlight that the last two although does not top the list right now but if these two reasons happen then the failure is a must you cannot avoid it okay so that's why stay till the end to understand these two as well so the sixth one is byol implications what is byol bring your own licenses implica implication many a times all the enterprise companies own the private licenses of different softwares for example oracle sql server whatever applications you are using and they assume that they can simply take those license on the cloud but no there are complications there could be restrictions uh, legalities involved wherein a certain vendor might not allow you to use their license on the cloud and that could uh, completely derail your cloud migrations right so that's why you have to understand what kind of licenses you have and how you could ship those on cloud or would you have to purchase new ones the next one is very important which is the seventh one migrating application along with data so you have the code you have migrated the code okay but what about migrating the application along with the data because that's where the rubber hits the road okay and that's is that is where your asset test is because a lot of times your application migration will be successful your database migration will be successful but when you will actually try to move or try to connect your application with the data then it will fail that's why your database migration your services like dms database migration service different services are there from different cloud providers i cannot recall everything but you have to understand that you have to match application along with data and then migrate okay and by the way guys if a lot of things you are listening here uh, sounds new to you or alien to you or if you're completely new to cloud then you can check out the link in the description and in the pinned comment uh, we have something very interesting for you from where you could start your cloud journey so do check it out moving on prioritizing applications to migrate so the order and the sequence with which you approach the migration is very important because if you choose the wrong application at the beginning you are in for a big trouble that's why uh, in migration we always try to catch the low hanging fruits we always try to catch that and we try to uh, go ahead with that because we know that the migrating these applications will will not only be fast but it will also boost the confidence of the migration team that's why prioritization is very important mainframe migration mainframe has always been the legacy the dinosaur which is still there which has not yet extinct in it and that's why if you have main mainframe systems which most of the banking industries do then you have to have very specific solutions for example ibm zos cloud which specializes in mainframe migration because this is again a giant and if you have this in plenty then you have to completely strategize your migration keeping ma keeping mainframe into picture the tenth one is post migration maintenance so again as we said earlier that your journey starts when your migration ends the same thing applies here if you do not have monitoring just cloud native if you do not have uh, tools like datadog dynatrace which are very cloud native uh, operations tool or maintenance tool then uh, you will not be able to do incident management you will not be able to catch issues quickly and that's why post migration maintenance if not done properly again results in failure of cloud migration projects at the 11th uh, place we have data privacy you have to understand guys that whatever we are moving to the cloud we are assuming that it is secure but there are risks there are hacks there are hackers which are trying to penetrate and get this data so what you are moving to the cloud if, if you are not ensuring that you are using proper encryption, proper security mechanism, identity and access management, then you are in again in for a big trouble because your migration might be su successful. What will happen if a cyber attack happens and all your customer data gets stolen? So that's why data privacy, if it is not tackled correctly, then it again could be a very big factor. Although in the list it is very down below, but when it happens, it always have a huge impact. You have to make sure that you're using tools like key management service, KMS, AWS, KMS, all these tools are different tools, cybersecurity tools you have from different uh, cloud providers. So you have to use those to ensure that your data is protected. And the last but not the least is vendor lock-in. So now for this one, I would say that a lot of organizations have become mature and have gone for hybrid cloud and multi-cloud strategy, but still a lot of uh, projects fail 
because uh, we do not understand what are the vendor lock-in uh, lock-in clauses and we get locked in we migrate thinking that we can move out but then we realize that okay we can only move out partially this is not at all replaceable and this could not be migrated to for example from aws azure or from azure to gcp so that's why uh, the approach which we should take is always cloud native so that's why the mitigation for this or the approach we should take is use tools which are open source in nature like for example for microservices we should opt for kubernetes which is the same for all the cloud providers so we should try to implement open source technologies and tools which are cloud agnostics which could work on gcp aws azure or on-prem so in that case you will never have the fear of vendor locking so friends this brings us to the end of this video i hope these 12 reasons will resonate with you if not then you tell me which reason is the one which you think is prominent for cloud migration failures and i hope this information added value to you if yes give it a like let me know in the comment what you li would like to learn next on cloud and until next time as we always say keep learning keep sharing and keep hustling bye for now